All right. Uh, good afternoon, Year Eight. Uh, welcome to our class. So today we'll be having another lesson, which concerns, of course, solving linear simultaneous equations. Now let's recall the ones that we had previously. There are how many ways again to solve a linear simultaneous equations? Um, Vivin, how yes. many ways again do we have? Three. Okay, we have the three different ways on how to solve simultaneous linear equations. And these are graphical method, substitution method, and elimination method. Previously, Olga, what did we have already? Among these three, which one we already discussed? Graphical method. Okay, graphical method. Now let's recall about the graphical method before we will start with the second method for today, which is all about substitution. Um, we were able to do some graphs last time. And how are we going to get again the answer or the solution for the two equations? When we do graphing, Farrell? How to find the solution of a two lines or two linear equations? We simply graph them and then look for what, Farrell? Farrell, please unmute yourself. Yeah. So how can we find the solution. Is there anyone who can help Farrell? Seems like he was not listening just now. You find the interceptor. You find the intercept. And the moment we find the intercept, what do we do? Uh, you put it on the graph. And then? And then you answer the question. Uh, how will you find the answer from the question, Joel? Uh, let's say this is the two graph already, Farrell. These are the two, uh, I mean, Joel. Uh, Farrell, for sure you already know how to do this. Please unmute yourself and tell me, how do we find usually the answer for these two line graphs? Uh, find the point of intercept. Yes, yeah, find the point of intersection, okay? Or the point where they met. Now, in this question, Farrell, what do you think? Or where do you think do they meet? Uh, negative one and negative one. Negative one and negative one. So that's how we simply do the graphical method. We just have to simply graph them. And then after that, look for the point of intersection. And that will be the answer. But Terence, look at this graph that we had previously. Uh, what if the graph looks this way? What do you think uh, will be the answer for this? It is uh, indecidable, indecidable. You cannot In find it. There's no answer. Okay. So there's no answer or you can say there's no solution. Why? Why is it that there's no solution for this question um, or for these two linear graphs, Terence? Uh, because there's, uh, they're not crossing each other. There's no point okay. where they're crossing each other. Okay, there's no point where they didn't cross, uh, they cross each other. They know there's no point of intersection. So there's no solution. How about in this part, Rowan? What do you think? Look, the graph of the two lines is just the same. What do you think will be the answer in, uh, in this type of question? Infinite solution. Infinite solution, why? Because they are the same. Okay, because they just only they, they have the same line graph. So that's what we discussed previously when we solve linear equations in uh, using graphical method. This time we will be dealing with solving simultaneous linear equations in two variables by substitution. So again, we're done with the first one. We'll now proceed with the second substitution method. Uh, can anyone please tell me what the word substitution means in layman's term or in, in your own words or based from your, uh, the way you know what the word English or the way you know in accordance to English, what is substitution means? Anyone? Replacement. Replacement. Okay. Thank you, Joel. That's a really nice term. So replacement. We substitute. Yeah. 
we do some replacement. And for us to be able to do this well, okay, uh, we have learned that by graphing, we're able to observe that whether pair of linear graphs pair is intersects at which common point they intercept. Now, this time using substitution method, we can do it, but not using graphing method anymore. So we will not be dealing with graphing paper, but this time we'll be dealing with, of course, just your pen and paper, as well as your solution to help you out for your computations, okay? Your calculators, I should say. Now let's go ahead and solve this example number seven from the book. Use the substitution method to solve the simultaneous equations x plus 3y equals to 8 and 2x plus 5y equals to 13. And for us to understand the process by process, we will solve it here on the Microsoft Word step by step. Okay, so here you would see two different equations, which are x plus 3y equals to 8 and the other is 2x plus 5y equals to 13. Now I want you to take down notes as I do the process in here firstly, okay? First thing that I have to see is that I will choose which variable am I going to make alone. And I have to make sure that the variable that I'm going to make alone is already positive. Now in maths, whenever I say variable, it is letters, right? Right? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, now how many variables are there here? We have two, the X and the Y. Among the X, uh, between the X and Y, which is already alone and which equation, the first or the second? Uh, Jocelyn, is there any variable that is already alone in between these two equations? Yeah. Which is what, Jocelyn? X. The X in the first equation, right? So let me get that first equation x plus 3y equals to 8. And I have to make a low, I make it alone. How can I do that? I have to move this 3y to the other side. Joseph, if I'm going to move the 3y to the other side, what will happen, Joseph? A divided by 3y. Uh, look, uh, I'm not dividing it, yeah? I am just moving it. And if I move it, this positive 3y, what will happen to the right side of the equation? Negative 3y. Okay, negative 3y. So ax equals to 8, then it becomes negative 3y on the other side. There you go. This is now my temporary value of x. So you can say that this is temporary value of x. Okay? Okay, temporary value of x. Then after that, you will now get this temporary value of x and you will substitute. So we will now be dealing with substitution, yeah? You will substitute on the other equation. So what's the other equation? The other equation is 2x plus 5y equals to 13, right? Correct? Now I will get the temporary value of x and I will put it onto all of the x's onto the second equation. So which means to say, I will write down two, I will replace the x here. Okay, let me just copy this one instead. Okay, so this is the equation, right? I will remove the x and I will input the value of the x instead. And what's the value of the x? The value of the x is eight minus three y. Did you get what I did just now? Okay. Yeah. All right, good. So, so far so good, yeah. Okay, so again, I remove the X and replace the temporary value of X in here. Okay, then after that, you perform some algebra this time. So what is two times A? 16. 16. Okay, and what's two times negative three Y? Negative. 6y, okay? Then we do plus 5y equals to 13. Then the next thing you have to do, combine all the variables in one side and all the numbers on the other side or the constant. So as you can see, I have to remain or retain the negative 6y and the 5y on the left side. And then I have to move the 16 to the other side so that is equals to 13, then I will, when I move the 16 to the right side, it becomes negative 16. 
So that is negative 6y plus 5y. Anyone? Negative y. Thank you, Joel. So that becomes negative y. And 13 minus 16? Negative 3. Negative 3. All right. So what is wrong with this is that it is not yet positive. So what I have to do, I have to make the y positive. So I have to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1 so that the y will become positive. And if I do that, negative 1 times y is now becomes y equals to negative 3 times 1 is positive 3. So there you go. I already got the value of y, which is 3. But I still don't have the value of x. Now, how will I get the value of x? I have to go back to my temporary value, which is this. And I now have to find the value of x. Okay, so let's do it. I will substitute now the value of x or the y, I'm sorry, which is 3. Okay, so re removing that of the y becomes 3. And what is 3 times 3? Nine. 9. So minus 9. So therefore, x equals to negative 1. So what's the answer here now? The answer now is negative 1 for the x and 3 for the y. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, any question? No. Okay, none so far. All right, so um, if you wish to copy the process, I'll give you three minutes to do so. Go ahead. You can also refer to the book, although the book has a slightly different way on how I did it, okay? But it's almost the same anyways. So what did we do? We make the x uh, alone for, for the first equation, then substitute to the second. Marcel, seems like you don't need to copy. Did you understand well? All right, so that's enough. So let's proceed with the next example. Okay, all right. Everybody, please take a look at the next example that we have here. Okay, so I have here two equations, x minus y equals to negative 3 and 2x plus y equals to 15. All right, everybody please take a look. And this time what I want to do is I want to get a value of the second from the second equation instead. Previously, I got a value from the first equation and I got x. This time I want to get a value from the second equation and I, and I want to get the y, okay? So listen, look at this guys. I will get the second equation, 2x plus y equals to 15. And I will make the y alone since the y is already uh, so low anyways. So what, I, what, do I, what do I need to do, Sarah, if I want to make the y alone? Move the 2x to the right side. Okay, move the 2x to the right side. And if I do that, Sarah, what will happen to the 2x? Negative 2x. Thank you, Sarah. Very good. Okay. Now, I already have a temporary value of y, which is 15 minus 2x. Can I do substitution now, Chanel? Yes. Yes, okay. Look at this, Chanel. I got the value from second equation. Where will I substitute, Chanel? Y. Okay, I will substitute to the y, but to which equation, Chanel? To the first or to the second? Look first. at this. Okay, very good, Chanel. So we have to substitute it to the first equation. So I'll get the first equation, x minus y equals to negative 3. 
and I will now remove that of the y and I will substitute the value of the y, which is 15 minus 2x. Okay, there you go. Again, you copy all the numbers here first or the variables, that's x. There's the x, then the minus, there's the minus. I will remove the y to the temporary value, which is 15 minus 2x equals to negative 3. Okay. After that, let us now do some algebra. X, negative times 15, Joel. Negative 15. Okay, and negative times negative 2x. Positive 2x. Thank you, Joel. So that's positive 2x. And at the right side, we have negative 3. Okay, good job. Next one, Vivin, what will I need to do? What do you think will I need to do this time? Remember that I need to get the value of x. So how do I do that? Make one and make x alone. Okay, make the x alone. So how many x's do we have here, Vivin? Two. Two. So which are x and the two x. What will happen to fifth, negative 15 then? Positive 15. Move to the right, correct? And it became positive. Okay, so plus 15. And then x plus 2x given is? 3x. And negative 3 plus 15 is? 18. Um, look at this. Neg this is negative oh. 3, not positive 3. So? Negative 3 plus 15? Vivin? Vivin, are you still there? Yeah. Okay, so what is it then? Look at this, uh, Vivin. Look at my, um, I'll give you time to copy later. Look at this first, negative three plus 15. What will happen? It's like 15 minus three. What's 15 minus 3? Sir? Uh, can you hear me? 12. No, oh, unfortunately, it seems like Vivin is having an internet connection problem. Let's have Rowan instead. Rowan, what's 15 minus 3? 12. 12. Thank you, Rowan. Then what's next? Rowan? Four. Okay, x equals to 4 because dividing both sides by 3. There you go. We have the value of x. What do I need to do next, Sean? What do you need to do next? Yeah, I already got the value of x. What else am I missing? The value of? Y. Y, okay. And for me to do so, I get the temporary value of y which is y equals to 15 minus 2x, and I will substitute the value of x. Right, Sean? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead, and Sean, and let's do it together. y equals to 15. Sean, negative 2 times positive 4. Uh, negative 8. Negative 8. So therefore, 15 minus 8. Negative 7. Hmm. Just simply 15 minus 8. I didn't say negative 15 plus 8. 15 minus 8 only. Oh, yeah. Uh, 7. My bad. Ah, okay. It's okay. No worries. Um, y equals to 7. So, therefore, the final answer now is x is 4, y is 7. Remember, whenever you put the final answer, x should always come first before y. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah. Question. Any question? Mm -hmm. Okay, now if there's no question, I'll give you two minutes to copy. Go ahead for this example.
Okay. Two minutes is up. Now, um, before we proceed with the next example, I want you to do this. Try it seven. Okay. Everybody, please do try it seven. Uh, which one, uh, before you do it, which one do you think it's best to make a loan? And from which equation, first or second? Uh, let's ask Parel. Which between the two do you think is best? Uh, which between the two variables is best to make a loan? The X or the Y? The, the Y. Okay, if uh, you have to make the Y alone, then you have to make it positive. So you still have to multiply it by negative later. How about the X here instead? Farrell, do you, don't you think it's okay or best to make the X alone here? Farrell? Yeah. Okay, so the first equation, so you can do as what Farrell suggests. You can make the X alone here on the first equation. And then after that, you substitute on to the second equation, okay? All right, everybody, please do it. I'll give you um, five minutes to do it. And you can Zoom chat your work and I'll see, record, of course, whoever will get it correctly, okay? Go ahead. So I need the value of X and Y. Farrell, I cannot see your face on the camera anymore. Please lower it down, thank you. Samuel, also, I can only see your hair. Marcel. Olga, I can only see your hair. Wyatt as well. Michelle, uh, Terrence, please move back a bit. Brandon, also, I can see you well. Jocelyn, I cannot see you well. Justin, I don't even see you. Lower down your cam, please. Thank you. Go ahead, continue your work, please. Okay, I already see here one answer, and it's from um, Okay, it's from Rowan. Okay, let's see Rowan's answer. Okay, uh, Rowan, you got it correctly, Rowan. Good job. Sean, uh, I need the value specifically of X and Y. So you have to solve that, yeah? If you use the X as uh, alone, then you substitute to the second value. Joseph, you got it correctly as well, Joseph. Samuel, too much. Uh, please recheck your work, Samuel. There's, uh, I think, something wrong with uh, the way you substitute the value first. Vivian, too much as well. Kindly recheck your work. Okay, Sarah. Good job, Sarah. You got it correctly. So we have um, Rowan. Joseph and Sarah who got it so far. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we still have uh, three minutes for this activity.
try it seven. Vivian, you already got the Y, but your X is incorrect. You have to substitute back to your X. Yeah. Jocelyn, there seems to be something wrong with your temporary value. Please recheck. Uh, what's your temporary value, guys? Uh, let's ask from uh, Joseph, who got correctly the two answers. Joseph, what's your temporary value of X? Two. No, te temporary value. I'm not asking the entire value. Temporary value. When you make the X alone, Joseph, in the first equation. X equals to minus 2, 5 plus 12. Sorry? X equals to minus 2, Y plus 12. Minus 2y plus 12. So you move the 2y to the right side. Or you can just do, Sarah, how did you do it? What's your temporary value of x? x equals to? x equals to 12 minus 2y. Okay, that'll be better. Okay, 12 minus 2y. Then after that, you substitute the x in the second equation. Thank you, Sarah. Although, uh, Joseph also got it correctly. Yeah. Oh, come on, you still have uh, two minutes left. Vivin, again, your Y is already correct, but your X is in is wrong. It says 12 minus 2Y, Vivin. 12 minus 2Y. So if you got already the Y correctly, you just input into your temporary value of X. 12 minus 2Y. Okay, there you go, Vivin. You got it correctly already. So let me list that down. Vivin already got it correctly. Jocelyn, good job. You also got it correctly. And Farrell, Farrell, your X is already correct, but your Y is incorrect. So might as well substitute the Y. Yeah, your X is already correct, but your Y is not. So maybe when you isolated the Y, um, you didn't consider the signs. So please recheck your work. Okay, one minute left for this activity. Samuel, still too much. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. And then uh, please check where you got this wrong or please check where you have a bit of a difference with my solution, okay? Or with my workings. Okay, everybody, please take a look at the screen right now. Okay, so this is the given. Let me move it to the next page so I will not run out of space. Okay, so like what I said, uh, x is the easiest one to get the value of. So x equals to 12, uh, uh, so x plus 2y equals to 12, isolating that of the x, making it alone, so that becomes x equals to 12 minus 2y, yeah? By the time I already got the temporary value of x, I will move to the next equation, which is 3x minus y equals to 1. I will change all the values of x to that of the temporary value. Hold on, guys. I'll wait up for a while, yeah?
Okay, so here. All right, so I will remove the x and I will substitute the value of x, which are which is 12 minus 2y. Okay, so let's do some operations. 3 times 12 is what? Um, Marcel, what is 3 times 12? Marcel, what is 3 times yeah, 12? Sorry, yes, sir. 3 times 12? Yeah. 36. Okay, 36. Chanel, uh, Michelle, what is 3 times negative 2y? Michelle, yes. what is 3 times negative 2y? Six y. Okay, negative six y to be specific. Okay. All right. Then there's still the minus y in there, and then equals to one. Next, let's combine all the y's to the left side. So I will only remain this two in here, and of course I will definitely move the thirty six to the right side, which then becomes negative thirty six. Okay. Sorry, this is positive one. Okay, let's uh, simplify further. Okay, next we have negative. Sir, 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 sir. Yeah, oh, so hold on. I, I guess there's something. This is negative 2y, sorry. Negative 2y. Uh, hold on. Wait, 36 3 minus 6y minus y equals to 1, okay, 36 minus 6y minus y equals to 1, negative 6 one. Uh, what's wrong, Terrence? Uh, how'd you get the, at the like, uh, 3 uh, bracket 12 minus 2y, how'd you get that? How'd you get ah. that minus 2y? Here, Terrence, we have to make the x alone. That's why I have to move the 2y to the right side. And when I do so, the sign will be reversed of course yeah remember when transposing from one side to the other it will become uh reverse yeah okay sir okay let's have the next one so negative 6y minus uh, y is negative 7y equals to 1 minus 36 is negative 35 then divide both sides by negative 7 which then becomes, um, let's have, um, Joel, what's the value of y now? Negative five. 35, okay, five. The moment we get the value of y, we go back to our temporary value to get the value of x or the other variable. Okay, so let's now proceed. I'm copying this, removing that of the y, which is now becomes 5. Okay, x equals to 12. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And what's x? What's 10 min, uh, What's 12 minus 10? Justin, what's 12 minus 10? Justin, 12 minus 10, what is it? 1. Goodness gracious, Justine. 12 minus 10. Justine. Yes, sir. Do you even know how to count? Yes, 12 I know. Minus 10. So, what will it be then? I didn't say 11 minus 10, yeah? I said 12 minus 10. Maybe you didn't hear it properly. Two, sir. Okay, good job. That's just two. All right. Please listen well. Presence of mind, everyone. Yeah. Okay, so x equals two. So therefore, the answer now that we have is two, comma five. Okay. Clear everyone? Okay, good job for those who got it correctly in a matter of just five minutes or even less. Okay.
Now let's have an example, which is quite tougher than this. And this is it. Okay, everybody, please take a look at this example now. Sample number three that we will have. Okay, so uh, what do you think this example makes different from the previous one? Sarah, I'll look at the example, the given. 3x plus 7y equals to 13 and 5x plus 2y equals to 12. So what do you think is a bit of a different from this example from the previous one? What have you noticed? Um, there's no numbers that are alone. Okay, uh, variables. There's no variables that are alone. You see, both the X and Y have something beside them. So which means this is different from the previous examples that we have, which are, look at this, the X is alone here, the Y is alone here, the X also is alone here. And this one, it doesn't have any uh, alone variables. So which means to say, this is what makes it tougher than the previous ones. And in this case, you just have to just choose whichever you would want to choose to make alone. Okay, so let's see it from um, Terrence. Which one do you want to make alone, X or Y? Uh, what's sir? what's sir? Which uh, just choose a variable and we will uh, do it X, all together. X, okay, you want to make the x alone. Choose first equation or second equation. Uh, first. Okay, so Terence wants to make the x alone from the first equation. So let's do that. So I took the first equation and I want to make the x alone. So in that case, I will make the uh, three x alone. So thirteen. I will move the seven y to the right side. It becomes negative 7y, correct? Now the x is still not alone because the 3 is still there. So what will I do next? What will I do next? Uh, you will... Um, How to get rid of 3? Put the 3 uh, and put it... How to get rid of 3? Uh, fractions. Okay. So you see this, three is being multiplied. So obviously I have to divide both sides by three, correct? Okay, that way, of course, we can cancel out the three there. And then therefore the X is now alone. Okay, so cancel out the three, having the X alone. So we now have X equals to this entire fraction, 13 minus seven Y over three. And that's what we're going to substitute. Okay, look guys, we got the value from a temporary value from first equation. So therefore we will substitute it onto the second equation. And here's the second equation. Okay, for this process, I need to get rid of the X there and substitute by the value of X. So I will get this, get rid of this. And I will put the value of x there, which is this. Okay? Is that clear so far? Now look at this. I remove the x and replace the value of x, which is the entire fraction. Any questions so far? Okay, now if there's none, let me proceed. So uh, the next thing that I have to do, I have to multiply this now. What is five times 13? Obviously guys, the five will be having a denominator of one, right? And we'll do numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Five times 13. Uh, please help me out. Olga, what is five times 13? Sir, the connection is breaking. Okay. Uh, let me repeat my question then, Olga. What is 5 times 13? Olga? 5. Okay. 65. All right. 65. And then, Vivian, what is 5 times negative 7y? Negative 35. Thank you, Vivian. And of course, both of them will have a denominator of 3. 
and then plus 2y equals 12. All right. After that, I have to get rid of 3 in the, den uh, the denominator 3 in there. What do you think should I do? Um, let's hear it from Rowan. What do you think should I do for me to get rid of the 3 here as the denominator? Rowan? You multiply it. By? Uh, internet connection as well. Uh, I definitely know Rowan can definitely answer this. Let's hear it from someone else instead. Can anyone help Rowan since he's having a bad connection? Anyone? Joel? What do you think should I do? How to get rid of three here? I have to multiply the entire equation by what? By, by three, all right. Okay, so if that's the case now, three divided by three is just one, so you just have to simply copy the numerator here. And then what's three times two y? That's 6y, and 3 times 12 is 36. Okay, leaving all the y's on the left side, which are negative 35y and 6y, and transposing that of the 65 to the right side, we now have 36 minus 65. So what is the negative 35 plus 6, uh, negative 35y plus 6y? Pharrell, uh, negative 35y plus 6y. On negative 29y. Negative 29y. And Farrell, again, what's 36 minus 65? Uh, what's 60? Go toilet, what, sir? sir? Yes, sir. Can I go to toilet, sir? <clears throat> go ahead. What's the question, sir? Uh, 36 minus 65, Farrell. Negative 29. Negative 29. Then dividing both sides by negative 29. Um, Farrell, what do you think will be the answer now? One. Okay, thank you, Farrell. So there you go, we have the answers, one. What is the next thing that I have to do? I already have the Y, I still miss the what? Um, Sean, I can't see you now, Sean. Please lower down your camera. Sean? Yes, sir? I already have the Y. What else am I missing? The X. The X. And for me to do that, I have to get the temporary value and substitute the value of X. Okay, help me out, Sean. So what is okay. seven times one? Seven. Okay, so that becomes X equals to 13 minus seven over three. And what is, hold on. Okay, what is 13 minus seven, Sean? Six. Okay, so that becomes six over three. And what is six divided by three, Sean? Two. Okay, so what's the final answer then, Sean? Give it to me on the coordinates form. What should I mention first, X or Y? Uh, Every time we do so, we have to mention first the value of? X. X, which is now what, Sean? Uh, two. And then followed by? Uh, one. Okay, thank you, Sean. All right, so there you go. So this is now how we are going to solve an equation that doesn't have any alone variables, okay? I will give you three minutes to copy this. Uh, go ahead.
Okay, one minute left for copying. All right, so that's enough. Okay, now, um, since we're running out of time already, so I'll just have to post your homework uh, before the end of this day. Okay, expect your homework and the deadline will be on Wednesday next week before our next meeting, okay? All right, so your homework will consist of the two ways on how to solve simultaneous linear equation, which are the graphical and of course the substitution. And then by next week, we will be dealing with the next um, part of your, the, the next part of your solving simultaneous linear equation, which is of course the third one. And what's that third again? Equation. Okay, yes, uh, Rowan, the elimination method. Okay, so, so far, guys, which one do you think is easier between the two things that we're done already, the graphical and substitution? Let's hear it from you, Joel. Joel, which do you prefer? Sub I prefer uh, graphic the graphical or, one. Oh, you prefer the graphical one. How about you, um, Sarah? Which do you prefer so far? The graphical. The graphical still, huh? Okay. Jocelyn, how about you? I think both is fine. Both is fine. Okay. But if, if ever you would want to choose just one, which one do you want? Uh, gra okay. Graphical as well. Well, wait for guys for the third one because I'm, uh, most students, even I, before when I was studying this in high school, I prefer to do the elimination method. Okay. And we will be dealing with that for next week. So is there any question for today's lesson? Okay, now if there's no question, um, let's wait for your next teacher to come. Who's your next teacher today? Mr. Dermawan. Okay, Mr. Dermawan, then I guess you'll be having the geography. Okay, so again, please do not forget to answer your homework ACE in ACE Learning Platform, okay? Um, about the graphical and the substitution method. Now, if there's no question for today, I guess that's going to be it. I'll meet you guys again for next week, okay? Bye for now.